The team of acolytes, usually specialists in investigations, are sent into a battlefield situation. War is erupting in the Calexis sector. Who will survive? It's all going crazy. Session 21 of Dark Heresy. Go! As we're on the part of almost not on who's surviving, we almost didn't. <laughs> well, we shouldn't really, because we are the guys dressed in the red t-shirts. Yeah. Wear red shirts, we die first. We, we both Come wear... on, Star Trek! Red for some reason. Now, <laughs> as a, we've managed to play another session of Dark Heresy, which is, of Lee course, gasp. set in the 40k universe. Now... That's quite good because I've been doing a lot of 40 gainers recently, an awful lot of 40 gainers. Yes, you have. Been doing a lot of painting and getting into certain things. And just to give you an indication, I just fancied doing this. Sometimes you just have to go with what, what inspires you, don't you? And, and like go for like mm-hmm. the modeling project or whatever. So let's just kick things off and see if any of you can guess what it is I've been painting based on my paint wipe rag. Okay, this has got an accumulative number of colours from the last, say, four paint sessions. Right, so, look at these colours. They all look blue, don't they? They they do, don't they? They do it like this. See if you can guess what I've been painting. Box or boxes. What force, what army. I've been painting based on those colours. That's your mission? Well, my guess is... Orcs, because that's what you play. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it was nice to be able to play a bit of Dark Heresy and jump on in. The sector has has, has gone mad. It's gone to war. Pretty much. Pretty this is much. the wrap-up, isn't it, of the apostasy storyline? Uh, it's the beginning of the end. The beginning of the end! Yeah, that. But they're thinking, oh, we'll purge the sector to cleanse it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's coming across. Cleanse yeah, the heretics. We're doing it in the name of goodness, but it's misguided as usual. Oh, of course it is. Mm. So we've been sent in with a huge Imperial Guard contingent as war is breaking out everywhere. Where are even are we? Thanks, I mean? world. Where? Thanks, world. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, world. It's a planet. See... If I don't have that sort of shit written in front of me, then I don't know what the, what the hell that actually is. Just listening to someone say, thanks, world. It yeah. Could, it, it could be their pronunciation saying, thanks, world, or... Well, it's F-E-N-K-S. Yes, thanks. Well, thanks to that, I now know where we were. And we were... We, we found ourselves dropped straight in, a load of tank traps up ahead of us in, like, a, a death... Valley ahead, mm-hmm. and uh, there are enemies in a big old bunker thing entrance way at the end. Getting ready to shoot us with turrets. Yes. So we were we were told that there were anti vehicular mines set mm-hmm. along the way, so they couldn't drive further in, even if we managed to disable the uh, the tank traps. So what well, we had to go in on foot. So um, straight away. Jericus jumped up on top of the APC, mm-hmm. got his scoped rifle out and had a bit of a, a scan and couldn't really see anything at the other end. Couldn't work anything out. Oh. I was going down that way because you never know what it is you're going to miss. True. You know, there could have been troops m- milling about in amongst the thing and I spot them now because I've tried scoping on them or something like that. Yeah. You can't, you can't know, can you? Well, not until you land on right on top of them and they start blasting the shit out of you. So we decided to try pressing forward instead. Now, straight away, as far as, like, the module's intention was concerned, we'd made a mistake. Was that an intentional beard stroke, or...? Well, we didn't make a mistake. Pete made a mistake to begin with. Mm. It's like, all right, my, my way of telling these guys were to move forward is that you're meant to die for us. 
Yeah, we had to try and inspire them, and that's what he said. So they say, no, their job is not to die for you. You know, step, you know, the commissar or whoever. Was yeah, the commissar did that. Pretty yes. pissed off. We had a commissar okay. and a lieutenant, and, and of course, Kids Dean always, he got anything in his pockets. Mm. Craig's reaction, nothing for you. He hasn't got anything in his pockets. Yeah. Now, you see, that's not, that's not you stifling his RP this time. Craig's the GM now. Mm -hmm. If he's dissatisfied, this is out of your hands now. Yeah. This particular point is, why would a guardsman be carrying around anything in his pockets? I would have probably lulled it up and, and made it a letter from home. Or a, a, a leave of medical clearance, and he can only get, he can, he can only get his uh, shore leave with proof of it. <laughs> or something stupid maybe. like that. Maybe. Just something idiotic. Yeah. Maybe a shopping list. I don't yeah, know. A shopping list of what bullets to buy. Death Alley was ahead of us, but the, the mistake that we supposed to have made was we supposed to have asked the Commissar... For a tactical approach. Yes, really. His appraisal on what we should do. Oh, yeah. It's... I know we were told, you know, he's there... Make use of him at all times if you need to. Make use of his, his knowledge. You can trust him and this sort of thing. But in the heat of it, with that ahead of us, it just felt like he... It did just feel like he would have come forward and said something. Well, he's expecting us to lead this. <sighs> okay, you want an assassin, an arbitrator, a <coughs> scum, and a psyker who have absolutely no tactical idea of a full-on combat situation that is full-scale war to lead an assault. Because they were on about, you know, at the end of it all, the suggestion was, oh yeah, okay, you Destroy the, the tank traps and get rid of the, uh, both the mines field. Get rid of the minefield somehow. Set them off early. And I'm like, beforehand, it's like, what's the point? How can we set them off if they're meant for vehicles. Mm -hmm. The weight of a human is not going to set them off. But then it turns out there are anti-personnel ones. As well. In amongst them as well, yeah. That's pretty uh, convoluted. Yeah. So we... we but the fact of the matter is, how are we as people meant to make them go off early? With a demolitions check? We were, uh, we were looking at all sorts of things. We were trying and thinking of things. We weren't being lazy. I was trying to think about whether um, Harold, with any of his psyker things, would be able to um, make. Which he doesn't have anything realistically of but use. He didn't have anything. I wanted to just see if he had any like barrier ability that he could have. I think you're being a bit too much. So. Mass Effect, maybe, because and even so, in Mass Effect, you could only do that in one particular point, and it had to be done as a out of character. Character who's not part of the group doing it, some sort of bullshit, which was during Mass Effect 2 last section type deal. You can create biotic barriers, but they're not allowed to be done with your party for encompassing the everybody. Well, you just become extra cover for them, moving between tank traps. I was talking about Mass Effect. Oh, right. Because the only time I remember biotic barrier being used in a massive effect, massive, fi massive field effect was during the assault on the collector base, and you had to choose which one did it. Whoever did it could end up fucking it up if they weren't loyal or yeah, you, weren't the right choice. See, you do see the biotics using their barriers a lot, like in the final wars and that. Yeah, it's, it is put in in Mass Effect Three. Yeah, the but fight but, that way in, in mass war. Yeah, but your party members aren't allowed to go. Aha! Biotic shield that encompasses everybody, which is a bit of a, a pain considering everyone else can do it who's not in your fucking team. Don't get me started on Mass Effect. Not even Mass Effect One, to be honest. So anyway, um, it just didn't seem all that obvious to ask him, even though I can sort of see, we can sort of see what the GM was saying. Yep. As in like, yeah, we should have asked him. We didn't really. Well, it, was, uh, it felt to me like if he was a commander, a commissar like that, why would he let us do that without making a suggestion on his own back? If he thought we were being stupid. Uh. He did. T the only thing he shouted at us was, don't be bloody fools. Those are those, those there are, are anti hopper mines. Hopper mines up there, which is anti personnel. Okay, bouncing baddies. So at that point, we're supposed to, have, I guess, said, "Well, what would you do?" It just didn't come about as a conversation. I'm afraid. <laughs> well, personally, I still think the fact that he's meant to be Mister Super Tactics Master, you should have fucking mentioned it. 
Or at least something, tactical-wise. I mean, but we that's don't... how the modules got it structured, right? I don't know. Anymore. It's been so long since we've actually done a heresy, and so long since I've even skimmed the book. Hmm. Yeah. It was, it was weird to be back into it, wasn't it? But mm. I can say that overall I did enjoy playing it. I like the system, personally. I like the way it does the wound location, armour, toughness bonus off the wounds. Yep. And all that. I like, the, you know, the different locations, the different different armoured in different ways. Yeah. I like, like woofer up. I like it. Well, it's by the same vein of thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, you know, that's what we grew up on, isn't it, as, mm -hmm. a, as, as a group? The, Primarily. The centre of the group with TFT and all of that. So it's kind of the continuation of that Dark Heresy, really. We're just trying to... Do some some sessions now to get it to its story end, aren't we? Really? Yeah, we've still got a way to go with this. I don't know if Craig wants me to have hand over the uh, remaining two men parts of the uh, Holoc legacy. Well, oh, we started. Yeah, I mean we've started it. That's the thing. Yes. Well, anyway, we managed to get all the way to the end eventually. With a load of tank traps being smashed down and Jericho's flipping over tank traps and jumping and moving from cover to cover and some troops dying and Jericho's getting blasted by a mine but dodging the worst of it and and, and you moving forward and doing a de mad desperate charge. Leading the, the charge. I was like... Pete with Harold looking for something to be able to pull but n never really being able to find anything to... He's like, oh look, bullets coming at me. Catch projectile. <clears throat> He did that at one point and managed to make them just drop out of the sky. And Kisdeen's like, oh, sky. come along if I have to. Or well, Kisdeen has to because she's got that bracelet thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I shock her into unconsciousness if she goes out of range. Yes. So they've took measures with her this time. Yeah. Uh, what I really wanted to do tactically to appraise the situation was I said, look, does the do we have any smoke we can pop? They don't have any smoke. We've got a death, we've got a death alley up on a raised... Um, walkway well it's a raised um, no we don't really smoke really pop because we're meant to ask Mr. Tactics guy what we're meant to do to destroy the tank traps and set the mines off early anyway we did it without asking him so yeah. it's a merit unto ourselves in a way yeah with our skills we can just blast through it I know some Imperial Guard died but it then came to the point like let's stick some demo charges on here yeah it took it, a while it did what was it five or six four or five about five demo charges just to be able to blast the doors open. Which is a metre thick. But we did. We blasted them open eventually. Mm -hmm. And I suppose sometimes it does feel a bit complicated. It's like, oh, okay, the Dyson, let's generate the damage for this time. Let's gen generate the damage again. And then the GM's having to check his things and, and check again. And Yeah, that, that's when things start to get draggy. It does. It really... Everything takes so long, doesn't it? Hmm with that sort of thing you really just want to be getting on with it don't you sort of like blast it open boom right go through the hole and blast it open and if things on the other side throw a frag in or whatever and just go in guns blazing <clears throat> it's kind of the idea right yeah and you're breaching yeah but I mean um oh, we were doing it accurate which is you know good in its own way I suppose but it's just something about the the, the system sometimes it's mm. just you, you, you've got to be careful of well, it letting it get too crunchy on yeah, itself. Yeah. Because it can crunch itself up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, you can GM it and free flow it a little bit more. You could just say, oh, bugger it, go on. You. You, you keep laying demo charges. You just want to keep using charges until it's blown open. Right, it will take another three more. Mm-hmm. Or something like stupid like that, just a GM call or something like that. Or it'll take another four. Yeah. Seeing the rate that you think it'll go, and I don't know, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes it is about time efficiency, isn't it? What you can do with the, with the limited time that you get yeah. to actually game in. Anyway, we did bust it open, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of fighting going on, but we're cut off from the main hole of it because Pete set fire to something over here, and mm -hmm. like, created a nice big wall of flame. Pretty much, that was the general effect of what happened afterwards. They're dug in really well. Yep. Enemy yeah, guards are. behind sandbags, inside a bunker thing, uh, gun positions, and on roof. And the, in, there's a, what is it, Valkyrie? Valkyrie hanger, hanger yeah. Hanger on the other side. We don't know if there's any Valkyries in there. Instantly, my first thought was, well, you're on about distracting fire. Can you maybe do a distract and I get in and 
get jump in a Valkyrie and turn I'll, the I'll, guns and. I basically was like Anakin Skywalker <laughs> in um, Phantom Menace. You remember when he yeah. boarded the droid ship? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like R two, we need to start back up again. Come on, hurry up! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, I was like. Oh, you want a distraction? Fine, fine. I'll just run out there and go, look, look, look at me, I'm a distraction! David Tennant style with Doctor Who. But you see, that's, that to me, that's action hero isn't it? Some grand, that's what you get given fake points for, isn't it? Yeah. So you can pull crazy manoeuvres. Mm -hmm. And that is nice, a fake point system is good, because it does encourage you to be bold. Yeah. Act heroic. I'll argue that, you know, that you want that, don't you, to entertain your GM. We were moving into the courtyard area, or whatever this place is, in this bunker. Debris getting all around. And getting cover. shot at as we're trying to progress. Vehicles, bits of stuff. Mm. Yeah. We're pushing forward, taking fire. We counter fire, push back to the position. A good firefight going back and forth. I'm behind a piece of debris. I'm like, I got my guns pointed at these guys. Let's shoot them. <laughs> I'll just pretty much keep full towing and take wearing them down and taking a few out from full towing and full towing again. Fire selector. Oh, I've got another clip loaded in that one. I had shots bouncing off my armour, and then I took... Had Try to, selector. I had shots bouncing off my armour, and then I ended up taking a shot that went... Pfft. Yeah. That was close! That could have killed me! <laughs> yeah. Um, and Pete almost got possessed. Yeah. He, he's funny, isn't he? <laughs> Even with his psycho, he's, you know, it's, it's unstable. It was like... Yeah. It was like, okay, that's a, he basically did like three psychic phenomenon phenomena in a row on three separate rolls. And the last one, he rolled so high, it went on to the table above Perils of the Warp. And then he rolled high again, and he would have become possessed by something. Which means we probably would have to turn around and start shooting him after this combat and the guys were done. Minus 30 test, wasn't it? Y yes, and he passed by one degree. He's got fucking lucky. He did gain, like, 20-odd corruption points, however. <laughs> and mutated a bit. He's mutated. He's like, I am a psyker, but I'm a slightly muscular psyker now. Ha, ha, ha. He's gone brutish. Yeah. I've done the rrr. I'm not punching you with toughness and stuff. Strength 10%, and toughness 10%, and minus something agility. Well, at least it didn't come off his psycheriness. He's slower now. He was quite slow to begin with, but he's slower and even slower. Fun. I need to buy a helmet. I have no armor on my head. <laughs> That's why I almost died this time. I took a righteous fury to the head. My toughness oh, saved my life. Heck. You know, you could have burnt a fake point. I had six health left at the end of it. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. then again, there's a the whole critical table chart, bull stuff that does like, oh, wait. Depending on how much damage you take on the critical table, depends on whether you're killed outright or you just take a knockout effect or of course, and it, bleed you know, out it, effects or some shit. It gets right. cumulative, doesn't it? And mm -hmm. then you, you see what happens. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I could have had my head explode from the sheer heat blast. And then one within raid of me would have to dodge the flaminess of my head exploding. Flaming skull pieces. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but if I add then, I'd have to burn a fake point and I only have one left at that point because I've got Two. Well, Jericus has got about five. Yeah. He's lucky, that bastard. No, he's just very good. <laughs> he's that good. He rolled zero whatever very multiple times today. Zero one. Zero twice. four. And zero one again. <laughs> yeah. I managed a zero one as well today. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> Not a girl in sight. Uh, that's the problem. I rolled zero one. Yeah, no one heard it. They saw it. Nice firefight. They went down. In the end, they ran away. Yeah. Pete set fire to a bunch of them and they were like, Ah, morale check, run away! And that was the end of it. So we can now proceed into the hangar. Or whatever the next part is. Or whatever that is, yeah. I'm assuming. Well, during this fight, we had someone shouting, needing reinforcements or some crap. I'm getting the feeling it was meant to be our guys. And they basically, Imperial Guard, can't do fuck without us. Even though they're, they're the soldiers and we're not. Yup. Yep. <laughs> I'm trying to say, yup. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it feels a bit moduly again, doesn't it? Yes, it, it does. A bit moduly. It does. We're in module territory here, I say, I say. Oh, yes. Gosh. Oh, yes. Modules. Oh. Modules. It's a bit difficult running oh. modules in general. Oh my, so it is. You've got to go with modules and say, right, um, edit, 
edit, edit, remove that, place this in here instead, edit, 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 edit. Right, that might actually work now. <laughs> now, it was about, what, 20 to 9 at this point? More or less. Pete would have to get down the, the to the exit from where he was and then get to his bus stop, and it would take him about that amount of time to get to it. So we decided, oh, we'll bus. call it there. People wouldn't mind ending a bit early and mm. that sort of thing. We'll push on next week. Although Jez's reaction is basically, <laughs> before it starts, is a good place to end. He doesn't like the percentile dice roll system. He, said that he, says, he says that the whole game is stacked against you. You're, you're, you're stacked to lose. We are normal humans. Normal humans aren't that great. No. And to be fair, our opposition are pretty poor. That too. Plus... So they're stacked you, to lose as well. If you don't build correctly in this way, in a fashion, in some fashion, it may be a bit meta for me saying this, but if you don't build to what your skills are, you're not going to do what, what you want to do. Example being, Kizdeen Gix is now rank 7... seven. She's taken no sound constitutions, which give and you And I've taken extra every single bloody one I can. You can sometimes take multiples in one level, of like two or three, she's, depending on and what. And she's whatever. got early teens. Right? Still. She's she, got basic starting she, wounds. Kisdeen hasn't... Yes. Kisdeen hasn't took any wound upgrades whatsoever. Nope. Her health upgrades. So... She that, dies fast. She does. So in that, Jericus has taken dodge abilities... So he can dodge more I've and dodge better. Aside. He's taken what sound constitutions he can as well. Yes, He's right. increased his toughness and his agility to improve his damage reduction toughness and his 40. ability to dodge better. Agility 56. Exactly. I mean, I've maxed out my toughness. Ballistic 55. There you go. I've maxed out my toughness, probably maxed out my ballistic or near to it. I've put my agility up as best as I can. I've taken every sound constitution and I've got 22 wounds. Well, I don't have that many. Well, I'm an arbitrator. I I've get like got... three or two or three a rank. I mean, have I got? 18. Well, I get two or three a rank, and I'm rank seven. Yeah. And I can still take... An... And I haven't taken anything in rank seven, mm. sound constitutions, and I've still got another two in rank eight, which means I can boost mm. myself to 26. <laughs> well, there we are. And that's, that's... As an assassin, I'm not meant to be taking loads no. of damage. I'm an arbitrator. I have... Toughness is my main skill, one of my main skills to put up, so taking the damage is my main point. Yeah. I am... Yeah. Tank, in a fashion. I'm a ranged tank. Yeah, I mean, in that, in that sense, that in that sense, if you want to be able to survive even the campaign, going through it and, and not have a really bum time of it, like Kistine's like health, full health. Whoa, suddenly no health. Yeah, and like oh, one or two shots. Die. Oh my god, further, we'll further, and everyone else is fine. If you want to keep doing that, playing the accordion, yeah, then you, you know that's fine. But you have to sort of think a little bit. I mean, I've gone gaming. I've you have taken to build. Some, I've got. Put my health up a lot, and I've taken two points where I've taken some serious damage. That's almost took me down. But you, in the, on the but other even hand, so, I still boosted my health. If I hadn't boosted my health, I'd be dead. I would have burnt both my fate points, and this one would have killed me. It is RP to build towards some degree of survivability, and the reason Indeed. is because if you're supposed to be a hero in a setting, in a story, telling a story. You have to be able to bloody try and Stay have a alive. chance of surviving that story. It's stacked against you. Right. But if you don't build yourself right, you're going to get fucked. So you have to... It's not RP if, if like, that person wouldn't have been able to do it. Yeah. The piglet, right, wouldn't be able to build the brick house to stop the wolf. It would need to take growth upgrades mm -hmm. to become older pig exactly. to then build the brick house. And, you know, suddenly it's like, oh, Piglet didn't do it. Oh, gosh. But that's not very good for the story because we know that the pigs can stop the wolf. But that's why we call it the three little pigs instead of the three piglets well, in that story. <laughs> in that sense, yeah, in that kind of way of thinking. So from that point of view, making yourself survival enough, yes, get the wounds in. You know, but you Take the defensive bonuses. Don't min-max. No. Just take other things to... I mean, Jericho's taken piloting because it's in his <laughs> RP. Let the... I've taken driving because, well, we've got a pilot. My guy, he's learned how to drive. He's learned how to drive these ground vehicles and these hover vehicles. That's his RP. He's a pistolier, so he's taken pistol upgrades only. He's taken no other gun styles. He's only mm. taken pistol weapons and dual gunslinger abilities yeah. so he can shoot things with his pistols. Jericus is like, oh, I'm an assassin. Yeah, and you're a damn good one. He said, yeah, but if you think I'm a good assassin, you should see how good I am as a pilot. Exactly. 
taking RP bone skills up as well is definitely is, the way to go. Which is what what Jericho's stunt. At no point has he ever managed to make use of his piloting. Yeah, he's, he's still taken, taken it. He's taken piloting skilled 10%, 20%, mm-hmm. civilian, to, and then, into military. And he's, and he's going, going to go for spacecraft too, going, which he can't take in his career, but at an elite advance, it's in his training. We ended the session there. We thought, oh, it would be best to pull it there. It's a good place. We wouldn't be able to get the next thing done in time before everyone needs to leave, so we'll just call it there. So yeah. that's where we're up to, guys. But hey, it's another piece of heresy. It's another piece of heresy action. Yeah. In the can. It's done. We'll leave it there, guys. And uh, we'll we'll continue on with that n- n- next of the week of... And uh, until such time... I'll see you at the table. But hey, it's another piece of heresy. It's another piece of heresy action. Yeah. In the can. It's done. It's coming your way. Oh, yeah. All right. Does she like it in the can? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear.